Donald Trump's landslide victory last week may have been a surprise to many, but his potential policies are not. Trump has been vocal for months about his plans to kick undocumented migrants out of America. In 2016, when Trump first came to office, you may remember Roxham Road popped up in rural Quebec. It saw more than 100,000 migrants cross. It has since been closed, but there are now fears of migrants trying to escape Trump's deportation orders who could try more dangerous crossings into Canada through wooded areas like this. Tariffs is another favorite Trump topic, and it has Canadian businesses concerned. Under the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act, other countries will have two choices. They will get rid of their tariffs on us, or they will pay us hundreds of billions of dollars, and the United States will make an absolute fortune. But what could actually come of all that? Jeff Timmer spent 30 years inside the highest levels of the Republican Party, and he joins us now. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. I, I know a lot of Republicans were celebrating on Tuesday. I understand it may not have been such a great day for you. No, that's for sure. I'm one of the 22% uh, of non-MAGA Republicans who voted for Kamala Harris this time around. And uh, there, th that means more than one out of five of, of people like me did our job. We voted for, uh, we, we think, the pro-democracy candidate, uh, the, the pro-future candidate. Uh, yet, uh, you know, the results were surprising. Not that uh, Trump managed to win, but that he managed to win in a fairly decisive manner and uh, achieve a majority of the popular vote exceeding 50 percent. Uh, and, and that's something that a Republican hasn't done uh, since 2004 and has only done once in the, the last nearly 40 years. So it's uh, it, it was a, a, a shock to the system. Um, but uh, it's when, when you look at some of the underlying factors, I don't think it's uh, surprising uh, to to too many observers that Trump did manage to win this election. Uh, Jeff, why do you think he was able to win so easily? You know, he won states that people did not think he'd be able to take. He took important swing states, as you said, not just the Electoral College vote, but also the popular vote. Obviously, something is, is resonating there. What do you think that is? I think there's a combination of uh, the, there's the old saying in American politics going back to the Bill Clinton race in 1992 that it's the economy, stupid. And I think that the economy definitely played a role in this. Uh, I think the economy gave older, more well-to-do white voters the cover that they needed to kind of mask their uh, uh, xenophobia and sexism. Uh, because they still do play a role, especially with older white voters. And so they were able to say, hey, the economy troubles me, even though they're doing OK in this economy. But there are folks who aren't doing well, even though the economy overall is. And those are the younger uh, Latino men, younger black men and, and younger white voters uh, who are coming out of college, starting their careers or leaving high school and starting their careers and are finding the, the economic circumstances more more difficult than previous generations have faced when it comes to the prospect of things like home ownership and in the way that inflation is taking a bite out of out of their lifestyle. What do you predict this Trump presidency will look like, especially compared to the one that we saw in 2016? Well, Trump hasn't been uh, one to change his act too much. So I think we're going to see a presidency, uh, an administration that looks a lot like the first, one that, that operates with a lot of chaos, a lot of misdirection, a lot of stumbles, uh, a lot of overplaying uh, his hand. And I think that they're not going to have uh, the ability to, to stop themselves from trying to overplay their hands, especially if Republicans do succeed in keeping control of the the U.S. House of Representatives, control of that uh, chamber in our capital still is up for grabs as races are being uh, counted and decided, especially out in California. There's still a chance that the Democrats could take control, which would have a, a, a big effect on what Trump is able to do and what the Republicans are able to do if the Democrats do hold that one chamber of, con of Congress. Yeah, and it's, it's so different than here in Canada where we have the, the fused executive and legislative system because you have those checks and balances in a very different way in the United States. 
Donald Trump is famous for having people who have his ear and he's their best friend and then they are kicked out of the circle. Right now, one of his best friends seems to be Elon Musk. Uh, what do you anticipate Elon Musk's influence will be on Donald Trump? He's talked a lot about cutting red tape uh, and some other ideas as well. <gasps> Well, one thing that Donald Trump has talked a lot about, especially uh, when he was campaigning in Michigan, where I happen to be located, uh, he talked a lot about eliminating uh, federal subsidies for electric vehicles, any incentive for electric vehicles. And I would bet, given Elon's outsized role in the Trump campaign and victory, that uh, that might uh, disappear from his agenda. You were the head of the Republican Party for Michigan. Therefore, you, you know the border with Canada well. There's obviously some Canadians who are quite nervous about a Trump presidency, whether it's ideological or more practical in terms of the fact that he said he's going to put tariffs on everything, including our oil, uh, which would obviously have a massive effect on our economy. Uh, the comments he's made about essentially blowing up NATO if countries aren't paying their 2%. Canada is not paying its 2%, and it's, it's a long way off yet from that happening. And of course, under the last Trump presidency, when he brought in some of the deportation measures, we saw a huge influx of migrants into Canada uh, that could look like a drop in the bucket compared to what happens with his new promise to start mass deportations on day one. How do you think he will interact with Canada in this coming term? I think it's going to be very interesting uh, how he chooses to navigate this, because you're right. What, 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 there's the economy and trade is certainly going to be a big uh, area of concern. And it's been a, a, you know, a strong bond between our two countries. Um, defense is going to be a big point of contention uh, as we go forward. I think that that's not going to, I think there's no question that Trump is going to continue to hold NATO allies feet to the fire when it comes to the level of their uh, uh, their national budgets that they contribute toward defense and, and, and toward NATO. And I think immigration is going to be um, far more disruptive this term. And, and in the very near future, um, you know, here even in the next 76 days before uh, before the Trump administration actually takes power at the end of January, I think that uh, you know, now uh, I think every uh, country in North America, you know, uh, Canada, the United States and Mexico all need to be very concerned with an influx of immigrants from their southern borders. Do you think that there's a way um, for the Canadian government to talk to to talk to Donald Trump about this. I mean, Justin Trudeau tried to create a relationship with him. He probably did relatively well. Donald Trump has since brought up the conspiracy theory that he is uh, Fidel Castro's son again. He's put him down in public. What advice would you have for the Canadian government? And, and do you think that Justin Trudeau can talk his way in with, with Donald Trump to convince him to change some of these things that may not be so good for Canada? I think Donald Trump is an easy guy to read and an easy guy to play poker with, actually. And, and you have to... Uh, you, <laughs> You have to treat him in a way that he likes to be treated. And uh, that's the advice I would give to anybody uh, in, in the Canadian government looking to improve relations or to, ha to improve their relationship with a Donald Trump administration. And that's to uh, uh, not necessarily treat him in the same way that you would have treated a Joe Biden other than to, uh, to uh, he, he likes flattery and he, uh, he, he likes to be seen as the guy in charge. He likes to be seen in this relationship, I, I know that it's, it, it's, it's not fair to put this on the Canadians, but Donald Trump likes to see the United States as the senior partner in our uh, in, in this partnership between the two nations. And I think that uh, that entering part of the psychology of how they deal with him, uh, it might cause Canadians to bristle, but it might help achieve their ends. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us with your insight. Uh, we'll be interested to see the future of the Republican Party as it moves forward under Trump and uh, figures out its future after that. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.